Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Nick Lenz. It was a uh, comment interview episode 110. We're reviewing the last three episodes of Common Rider Black. And I might just go ahead and go ahead and review the first two episodes of Common Rider Black RX. Now, in these last three episodes, we have where there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. 49, basically, kind of in a way, is 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 another step toward the end of the series. Because, well, we're running out of villains. So, let's just basically have where Kyra takes him the last of the Grand Mutants and the Bat Mutant. A character, a creature who's around in episode 1. Who a lot of the time most is for cameos, occasional spy work. And here he finally dies in the episode. Yeah, and also what happened with um, Kiko and Katsumi. They actually made it to America. Yeah, they got the country and made it the San Francisco, which I think they're in hotel. And when they when they suspect also that Kaito is alive, and well, they try to go back, but not yet. But sadly, put this be the last time we see them, because they don't really return again after this. Nope, they don't. So they're basically volunteers as a comrade. And he's like, oh, because he finds out he's stronger. And also, sadly, in 49, I think it was in 49, a uh, whale mutant dies. Actually, the very next episode, he dies. Mm-hmm. In 50. Yep, so, yeah, comrade kills the la- uh, kills Dyroom. Those actors come back a little bit later. Yep. And this, he this he, he, he actually returned once during our extra movie. But that would be like, kind of like almost like last you see of him. And then comment to episode 50, like, okay, Shadow Moon is like, okay, the Grand Mutants are all gone. Like, the only mutant, the only one's left. And we all see in episode 50, we finally see the Golden Headquarters. Yes. If you're really curious of what the heck this place looks like, it is... This is it right here. This is Contour with the Whale Moon. That Those buildings right there... That is the Golden Headquarters. These towers. Now, why the heck they look like this? I don't have any idea. It's not really explained. And I'm thinking, wait. What, wasn't he there also for the pilot episode? Oh, that's better. So, yeah, the brought to the place, and of course, we see the debut of one last original mutant. There was a few fleeing mutants. Don't know who these mutants are. One looks like a cyclops. One looks like a look like a rejected salamander. You know, I couldn't tell what it was. The last one that shows up here is the sickleback mutant. He is the last original mutant introduced in the series, and sadly put, basically, he kills off whale mutants. And of course, where well, after, of course, well, by the way, Donum was killed by the Comrade Kick, just like the other one was. The, the first one who died was actually killed by Shadow Moon's own beam. Yep, so, yeah, Shadow Moon fights him. And before we begin the fight, uh, Shadow Moon was brought to the lair of the Creation King. And so is, of course, Comrade Black. And we finally figure out what the heck this guy looks like. What does the creature can look like? And he looks like this. Like, oh, what the heck is that? Yeah, even I basically, when I first saw this, even on you know, here and in the, in the show, I'm like, what the heck am I looking at? It's basically a giant heart. Yeah, that's literally what the creation king is. He is literally just a heart. Like, is it all that's left of the guy? So... And then eventually, after he defeats Shadow Moon in combat, it's like, oh, take his keystone, Kingstone, otherwise I'm going to drop into the earth. So, first he calls, oh, by the way, also Battle Hopper is destroyed in the final episode, though he does, I'll get to what happens with next. Yep. Yeah, Battle Hopper is destroyed, and it stays where it is by the next series, which I'll talk about in a minute. So, Creation King himself was killed off in the set in episode 51. But being stabbed with a Satan Saber. 
Yep. Stab with a Satan Staver. I'm like, that's interesting. Yeah, and and before this, he was he actually wanted to drop into the planet's core. Effectively destroying the planet. That's what he wanted to do. But Black's like, nope, you're not going to do that. I'm going to stab you and kill you. Yeah. And that's the last day of the Creation King. When him, him dead, the handmaids are dying because of the building collapsing. For some reason, Black does not retrieve Shadow Moon for some reason. I'm not sure why. And this would not be the last we see of him. He would actually return in um, Fly Red. He does return in Black RX. I'm not going to get to win. But he will return. And then he then he will come back an, again in the 90s. I'll get to that later point. So, Golem is all gone. All the moons are all dead. Yeah, like the whole organization is gone. And, of course, Black himself, uh, Koto. It's unknown if he can transform because it'll transform with the next episode when, when RX starts up. But yeah, he closed up the shop, basically in episode 2. Uh, don't know what happened to everybody else. It's quite weird. He drives off, and that's the end of the series for Black. I got handed to Black. Uh, final thoughts on the main series of Comrade of Black. It was really good. Um, there are a few bad, a few occasional not good episodes. I would probably say the most useless episode of the whole series is probably the one involving the idol. Yeah, that was the most useless one. And the person who was the owl tried it again like, Oh, hi, I'm Yoko. Despite the fact that people know who she is because of her tapes. Yeah. And too bad this character never seen again. Or how about the episode where women just stop being mothers because of a drug that one villain's crates. Yeah. What did I think of basically, like, the stuff that gets weird, it's... Very interesting. At least the, you, you can praise the fact that the hype that he's very powerful, the Creation King. I at least got praised that. Shadow Moon looked fantastic. I love the suit that they gave him. And my original theory uh, through this whole series of why Shadow Moon took so long to show up was because of a contract dispute. That was not the reason. The reason I, I now that's what I theorized. Another theory I had was because the suit took too long. That's probably the reason why, but in actuality, I have no actual idea of what took so long with this character showing up. Yep, and that wraps up Black. Moving on to Black RX, where, well, I've read, I think I missed, uh, this may have mentioned in the clip movie, I skipped because it was a clip show, the movie that came before this one, where apparently Kaito became homeless and started living with another family. He, and, by the way, uh, when you see him pop up in this series, he actually starts wearing an outfit that... Now, the thing is, with Comrade Black, RX, now, he uh, his civilian attire that he wears here, um, for what I can tell anyways, here is right here. Yeah, this outfit right here. Some of you may recognize this outfit if you watch Mass Rider. Yep. Denos, yeah, that's the same outfit he wore in the series. Which, I always gotta praise the fact that Mass Rider did that. Having the civilian wear the same exact outfit that his counterpart in Comrade did. Because, this, this is something usually they don't carry over from the, from the, from, from, from Japanese Hokusai stuff. Like in the case of Super Sentai. Can you think of any of the, of these, of the Rangers in the civilian where they wear the same exact outfit as their counterpart? Not really. My guess is probably because it's very simple to put on, and it's just, well... Though, I think, I think, yeah, I think he either wore gloves. Yeah, so, he doesn't transform, but then he, and all of a sudden, like, everything is, like, back to normal, very peaceful. And plus, it's over him being a helicopter pilot, which, that's interesting. And he's there with new characters. Yep. So, in just the first episode alone, we're in use the Shira family. There is... Sakoshi Shira, who is the patriarch of the family. Yeah, and his counterpart is uh, the father who adopts Denro in the opening episode. There's Ukito, his wife. 
who they, 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 they fight a lot of calls are pig face. There is Hidomi, an adorable little girl. There is uh, Shikaru, Shikara. And of course, there is also Rikito. Yep. And I think he's supposed to be Katsuro's girlfriend. Mm hmm. Yeah, as for when they met, presumably during the, the time skip. Now, is there any more characters in Juice here? Uh, well, not in the first episode, per se, but we're introduced to brand new villains here. And those villains are General Jark, a.k.a. Count Dragonoff, Myrabon. You're thinking, General Jark? Wait. That's Count Orloff. Um, well, yes and no. This is his com. This is his comrade RX counterpart, Count Dragon. That was his name, Count Dragon. That was his counterpart in Mass Rider. There's also Basugan, which here's a fun fact about his actor, the guy who plays him. He also played the Creation King. Yep. And he's here for most of the series and one of the movies. Yeah. Now, who is his counterpart in uh, Mass Rider? Double Face. That was his counterpart. You're thinking, okay, so there's also Mabruvan, who is a very beautiful woman. And from what I read, she was actually in love with General Jark in the, in the Comrade version. It's implied in the Senta counterpart in the Power Club, but it's not really going to very much. Yeah. And her character's name is Nafira. Yep. The other ones are Gate Zone, Godron, and and that's it. Uh, Gate Zone is Cyclopter. Yep. And Goron. I got like going on. His is he's Gark, and he's like. There's also a security robot. Named Chucker, who is a chief cabinet secretary, and he is just fact. He's just basically a robot. And this also has the debut of a ship. A ship known as the Crisis Fortress, which in Mass Rider this was Count Orlov's ship. Yep. And if you're really curious, does it, in fact, operate the same way it did in Ma we saw in Mass Rider? Does it have a teleportation beam? Yes, it does. Now, I'm only, I only had watched the first two episodes because the first two feel like a two-part loose connected... It's loose connected two-parter. That's most what exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, basically, everything's all hunky door, and all of a sudden, these pillars are showing up. And then eventually, Cultural is taken to the Crisis Empire ship. Now, this happens in the first episode. You're thinking, really? In the first episode, we go to the main bad guy's fortress. <laughs> Me. In the first episode, which I thought that was kind of weird and a bit out of character. Yeah, I thought this was kind of weird because normally they say stuff like this for, like, the finale. But you're probably thinking, wait, didn't they do this in Black as well where they had, where Kaito was actually in the main base at the start of the series? Uh, yes, but he didn't know where it was. This one, yeah, we know where, what it is and where it is, presumably in Earth's orbit. And their plan is simply to wipe out humanity... And establish their empire on Earth with a 5 billion population. And you're thinking, wait, this sounds very similar to Golden's plan, except there is evolving mutants. Yeah, and then we unleash just one robot in the first episode. Yep. 
Now, in the case of basically what we have here from the opening episode of the series, now, the, how should I put this? The transformation device, the Kingstone, is, is, is broken half. Yeah, he cannot transform at all. So, then basically where he is basically like, after he turns him down, then he shoved to outer space. No, I'm not kidding about that. He shoved to space. Oh, and almost forgot to mention, this is the last Sentai series. This is the last Commander series released in the 80s, and it's also the final series under the Showa era. And here's also something interesting to know about this. Like, final Showa series, final 80s series, um, it is also the only known Sentai series to... Uh, Comrades, I think Sentai. Uh, Sentai will be next to this one. Uh, it's the only Comrade series to be an actual sequel with the same lead, but with different villains and different supporting cast. I mean, the only connection between Black and Black RX is the lead. Now, we don't see him transform into Black the whole episode. Then he shoved into space. And then thanks to basically getting contact with the sun, he is reborn into the very suit you see in Mass Rider. And he does do the thing where you see him transform, like, you see like close with a belt that it turns to his head. That does not happen here. Nope. So pretty much, basically, he battles these skull robots, which... By the way, I also need to open the episode. Get this. You have a kid reading the Comrade of Black manga. Now, how do I know this? Because I read up a line, and the fact this manga does exist. Have I read it? No. The only Comrade of Black manga I have personally read uh, was one for the original Comrade series. I've read Kuga, and I read one, one of the chapters for Ghost, and that was basically it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have the Skull Masters and the Skeleton. Basically, they don't want to show up in the uh, the opening episode of the series. Then we have Strange Robots. Uh, the first one we see here is Kalkaban. Yeah, who has our human form, which deals from a police officer. Yeah, he actually has come back after this episode. He comes back like three more times. Yeah, there's this weird detective. Yeah. By the way, does uh, Kubacon have a counterpart mass writer? Yes. Lavatron. He appears in one episode. License the Thrill. Which, unlike in the case of his equivalent here in our experience in episode 2, he appears in episode 1. Yep. Yeah, and he's the only one who does appear in episode 1. Yeah, and uh, Skull, but they do have a counterpart, Skull Reapers. I think they appeared for like a few episodes. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so we have monsters for Morbon, basically the, the female officer. We have her for the first episode. The second episode, it's Armor and it's Gate Zone for episode two. Now, do all these monsters take turns every episode? Yes, they do. Yeah. Uh. 
I'm definitely looking forward to discussing the rest of the series, per se. And, of course, the movies. And there are two. Yep. Uh, I decided not to go through the Comrade of One through RX Gathering. Because it's mostly, like I said, it's a clip show. But yeah, I enjoyed the start of the series so far. I'm definitely looking forward to discussing the remaining uh, 45 episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to discussing the rest here. So, yeah, I'm going to pretty much wrap it up here. Um, I'll catch you all later from our review for uh, my comic corner. When I chance to later. Okay, next video. Bye.